Hey, what's up, everybody? Juan Martinez, a.k.a. Dr. Love. And I'm Stephanie Martinez, right? And you've just joined us on This Is Real. What's going on to all the real ones? Yet another episode. Welcome back, everybody. Yo, real people, real problems, real solutions. We would like to keep it real. 100. You know, all 100. You know, because I remember like saying, yo, keep it real. Yeah. And then we keep it, it like 98.9 or 99. Even 99.9 yeah. ain't mm-hmm. real. Like, I, I so I, I'm enjoying this. Let me give you a little preface yeah, before we, we get into the show. You know, um, so I went to the Houston Rodeo. Woo, about Hold time, on. man. Hold it's been like I 15 did. years. I did, I did. And in this uh, Houston Rodeo thing, I winded up, uh, now I found out even the name because I forgot where I went, mm-hmm. you know, because it was kind of one of those, like, it was one of those, we need to eat, just hit it on the GPS. And so that wasn't even, like, planned. Nice. It was like a hit it, and then, does anybody even know what they have there? I think they have barbecue. We wind up in Pinkerton's, <laughs> right? So we wind up there. So even that was like a, don't really know where we're going to go eat. We just picked something that was on the way to where yeah. we were going. So we get in there. I have another, a Hevican shirt. Mm-hmm. It might have been this one. But, you know, <laughs> Hevican, Citizen Heaven, I love this sweater, yeah, yeah. right? And so I'm rocking it, and the this guy comes up to me. We start talking. And before you know it, you know, he starts breaking down his story. Nice. And it, it was cool. He, mm-hmm. Now, I didn't have, like, my pastor look. You know what I'm saying? If there's a pastor look. <laughs> yeah, I think he went uh, the army fit, right? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, totally the not. If, Close to rodeo, but, you know, we'll get you there yeah, next well, year. It was, next well, year. Yeah, it, yeah. you know, it was because <laughs> it, it was my <laughs> I'm going to go hunt side yeah. rodeo, mm-hmm. right? You know what I'm saying? Because okay. they could cowboy, but they hunt too. Next year, stay so tuned, next year, guys. Next year, next year so, you're going to have the boots and the hat. <laughs> the boots and hat, yes. Mm-hmm. Well, without the fur, boots with the fur. <laughs> and so what winds up happening is that I am um, talking to this guy, you know, and before you know it, he starts sharing his story. Oh, because he's like, yeah, he kind of saw, he's like, I know you're a pastor. You're you're in something like that. And I'm like, wow, how'd you know that? I'm like, I even looked. I'm like, if anything, I had the New York swag. Yeah. Even though right now I just told you the hunting swag. Yeah. Free y'all, free y'all. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, and then, bam, he tells me this story and just, <clears throat> I, I'm, it, I, I cried when I got in the car. Wow. I, I literally, you know, just started crying and going to the Lord and, and really just wanted answers. Like, yeah. And, uh, you know, I felt like through prayer and stuff, I wind up like, hey, you know, what's up? And then, you know, we wind up having a conversation. And here he is today. Brother John, what's, what's up, up, man? What's up, man? Welcome. How are you? You know, I'm here, man. We're here. Hey, man. You know, that was that was dope. It, it was cool that you had that. I don't know if we call it the spidey sense, but, you know, you <laughs> knew who I was. I'm a little intuitive, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was dope. That was dope. I mean, I mean... <laughs> You're a pastor, you know, like yeah, that was yeah. pretty dope, you know. And so, um, so tell us a little bit. So, you know, for people that don't know you, uh, because I, I definitely want to get in, I almost want to jump right to the story, but mm-hmm. uh, a little bit about you, yeah, man. So, I'm from Houston, Texas, kind of from all over the city, um, kind of grew up in ministry and music and all that, and um, uh, after. 20 plus years of pursuing yeah. music and ministry i had an opportunity happen and joined a band and put some songs out mm. i think we're going to try to play that song at the end but go yeah. ahead and then um life kind of took an unexpected turn like six years ago and i ended up getting sick and then now i'm kind of trying to pick up the pieces mm-hmm. so that's kind of the short of it that's just, okay 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 first of all what's your last name mcconnell no, no, no. What'd you say earlier? What'd you say earlier? Mi canel. Mi canel. It's like blood in, blood out. I feel That's like right. he's like, yeah, mi canel. Yeah. All right. Why? Why? Miklo. 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 Yeah. yeah. You said earlier. And what was it that you said when you, you know, because I was like, That's your last name? And you're like, Nah, it's McConnell. Yeah. McConnell. Why? Why you said that? Uh, so, yeah, I grew up uh, with a Hispanic stepfather since I was like a year old, something like that, a year and a half old or so. And so, uh, growing up, I just always felt more drawn to like the hispanic culture and i mean that's that was my dad you know yeah that's who raised me so it's mm-hmm. like you know totally that's me you know i think so, earlier you were like what did you say earlier oh like, yo soy, soy gringo oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yo soy gringo pero mi corazón es mexicano wow <laughs> if you spanish if you're hispanic out there and you don't speak spanish shame on you <laughs> shame on you and so um okay so i i because i gotta paint this picture and, mm-hmm. and before we're gonna think because this is all i thought in my head right and I don't know. I don't know if I'm wrong, right? But this is how I saw it in this movie, you know, because mm-hmm. that's how I see, you know. So I'm, I'm, 
playing your song, you know, I'm like listening. I'm like, man, because meeting you and then hearing you sing, and you know, this was like, like a, a whole moment for me, mm -hmm. right? And so I've been praying for you since I met you, right? My wife's praying for you, right? We're like, mm -hmm. you're like a cousin now. You're like, you're like a cousin. So, <laughs> you know, I'm like thinking, okay, so you're doing life, you know, because I want to talk about raised in church and all that, because I think, you know, and even where you're at, all, all mm -hmm. that I want to talk about. Yeah. But I, I'm thinking, you know, the way I saw it was, you know, you, you have all this, Jesus, you know, you're mm -hmm. singing the song, you know, this thing's on KSBJ, it's on everything, mm -hmm. right? I mean, this is like, like what most people, even if they don't admit it, the the place they would want yeah. to mm -hmm. hit, right? Like mm -hmm. maybe it's, maybe if you're not a singer, you know, to a big conference or a big whatever, right? The, this big mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. it could you could even look at it from a place of i finally became a doctor and then all of a sudden like your arms break or something like i don't know mm -hmm. right the way i saw it was i saw you like that and then all of a sudden um we want to thank all of our partners who support us because of you this is real has a tremendous reach from houston to galveston and up to the austin area this show reaches over 100 prisons nationwide with over 500,000 inmates tuning in weekly to hear the good news through our radio show and the Pando app. To partner with us, visit JuanMartinez.tv or download the free Get Rap TV app. You, this happens, this moment happens that you're going to talk about because I want you to kind of break it down for us. Mm -hmm. This moment happens um, and then like everything stops. Mm -hmm. Like, and then I'm like, man, God, am I mad at you? Right. Cause I'm, I'm looking from the outside. Right. I'm like, am I mad at you? Am I depressed? Mm -hmm. Do I even want to live anymore? Do I want to live? Do I, you know, like, like what happened? So I want you to go back a little bit. You were like raised in church and all that. Right. You told yeah. me I got PTSD from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what did that look like? Man, I was just talking about this last night with, uh, with a friend of mine. Um, so, you know, back in the eighties, man, like that was like the David Koresh Waco stuff. I don't know if you're familiar yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, back then the big thing was like revelations and end times and the rapture mm -hmm. and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And yeah. so, um, you know, my mom was just trying to do the best for us, you know, that she thought was the best mm -hmm. and she put us in a private school, um, in North Houston and it it kind of was like the theme in that era was all of that like you, you know there was a song called I wish we'd all been ready and I was like talking about the rapture and you know all Heavy. this stuff yeah and so really early on man like we were indoctrinated with this just belief system that um Jesus is coming soon mm -hmm. yeah they've been saying that for a long time right he's coming soon yeah, yeah. right and um, you better be ready. Mm -hmm. And so every day I had that, you know, that sand clock that the, you would flip. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would like timer. in my head would think about like, you know, okay, well, I, I, I need to like repent of like my sins or that my thoughts or whatever, like every Sounds second. Sounds almost fear-based. Like, yeah, yeah, oh, no, absolutely. Fear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's about, to, I'll tell you some okay. more here in just a second. But I would have these moments of like, man, if I'm like, what if the rapture happens and I hadn't, just prayed like five minutes before mm -hmm. like that's how i felt wow you know? that's deep and we're talking about like pre 10 years old i was like young young five six seven years old however old yeah and then if you didn't grow on the uh, grew up in the church world there was a, a a series of i think it was movies or tv shows or something um it never went mainstream but it was called a thief in the night and this really is, this is in the 80s um, where it was all about the end times and the tribulations and the mark of the beast and all this mm -hmm. stuff. And um, at six years old or so, we I was in a room with a bunch of kids and they put this thing on and there was like depictions of people getting their heads chopped off with a wow. guillotine because they didn't uh, uh, renounce yeah. God or they, yeah, you know, yeah. because they believed in Jesus, they were going to get their heads cut off and they gave them a choice and an ultimatum. Like you either take this tattoo on your hand or on your forehead um or we're gonna kill you yeah you know what i mean and so like so, a, and you're like 10 no i was eight, like, like six, six seven maybe yeah you know so i mean like i think that like that developed into and i don't use the ptsd thing lightly i i've i've 
I, th- I truly believe that this left such an impact on my on my mind that I made a lot of decisions as based on that a young person through mm. all. I mean, I'm 38 now. Um, I made decisions all the way until my late 20s that were based upon that belief system. Where, yeah. like, no lie, right here off 45 in Rankin, there's that military installation right there. Yeah. I would drive past that thing in my 20s and like have Wig really up. bad anxiety and panic because. Um, in the early nineties when they were putting out there, I truly thought that was the government coming, you know, wow. to come to come and get us and they were gonna, you know, do all this crazy stuff. And so That's deep. Mm-hmm. You know, as a as a young person, you know, think about it, you know, you can't you can't even vote, mm-hmm. you know, before yeah. you're eighteen and it's like you're being told you have this ultimatum. You either believe in Jesus and go to heaven and be a martyr, or you take the mark of the beast and you spend eternity in hell for, yeah. for denying Jesus or denying God anyway. So that, that, you know, growing up in the eighties, uh, and a lot of people my age share the same feelings yeah. of like, I want nothing to do with this and I'm hurt from the church and this and that, you know, which that, that sucks. Mm-hmm. Well, you it's, know, in a it's, sense. it's people taking a belief system and it's like a recipe book. Mm-hmm. You know, not, we were talking about barbecue earlier. Yeah, barbecue. Not everybody can cook barbecue. Not everybody, yeah. Not everybody. So, you know, so. <laughs> hey, he got all like. You yeah, know. he's like. Yeah. You know, yeah. but it's the same thing with training, you know, weight training or boxing. I mean, mm-hmm. just because you say you're a trainer, say you're Oh, no, no. I told her to get it. You know yes. I mean? yes. So, So me growing up in a uh, theology and era that I did in the city I grew up in with these people preaching this end times theology which you know i was talking to my friend yesterday about is only like a couple hundred years old that whole idea of the heaven and hell and rapture and all this stuff yeah anyway but that that's that's kind of how i grew up and um i didn't i didn't i I get it i get it because like i remember like when i first got saved Mm -hmm. i think the people all around were like very much like revelation intent so i was like into that big time and then i had like this this epiphany you know, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm like the wild stallion anyway, right? So I'm like 50 and I'm like, we got to do this. I'm like, eh, I don't know. But, you know, that's the beauty of having this personal relationship. And and obviously that was when you were six or 10, you know, so I, I, I know as you keep getting older and you, you know, I guess we'll get into that as well. But like for me, I had to like, I just realized that, you know, if I live out my life today, uh, you know, with Jesus to the best of my ability, I don't really have to worry because whenever he comes, mm-hmm. which we don't know when, yeah. then I'm good. Yeah. And, you know, so that's that's how I've lived. But I understand because some of the people that were around me were very much like, if you are not talking yeah. about this, you are not. If you're not reading King James, you are that. And sure. I'm like, dang, I was reading the easy to read Bible. I didn't mm-hmm. even know how to read. I'm not 36 years old. I don't even know how to read. But I was still getting the same revelation, which is kind of funny. Mm-hmm. But they did. If it wasn't because I had a good relationship, they would have messed me up. Because they were very much like King Jimmy or nothing, mm-hmm. you know, like blah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, dang. Yeah. You know, you almost don't feel like you are <laughs> like you you're you measure up or something sure. to these people, you know. Well, I was thinking about um I was kind of reflecting on this last night. It's like uh I look at the vast majority of the kids I went to school with, man, and they're just messed up. They messed up. You know, and and those people you're talking about, um, are truly a, a detriment to the faith. Yeah, I because believe. because you have, um, it, it's interesting the the very people that you look up to and you think, okay, these people are like, man, like I used to grow up and I, I used to look at these people like, man, they're they're on this pedestal and all this mm-hmm. stuff, and then I realize like I look at their lives now, I see some of these people and I'm like, man, they're they're no they're no better off than me. Yeah. Why did I why did I give them such credit? And totally. and um you know, I I I dealt with a lot of that judgment and stuff growing up because I was kind of like the rocker, you know, guy and back <laughs> back when I had hair. Yeah. <laughs> and um you know, I had these uh it was mostly like middle-aged women that were like super judgmental against me, man. And, you know, that was also kind of weird for me because I'm like, well, wait a second. Y'all are like trying to like, you know, get me to believe in God and this and that. And, you know, and then you'll, you know, behind my back, 
start talking nuts, Ugh. you know what I mean? And, and judging me and things like that. And so that was kind of weird too, but. Um, that's, that's, that sucks. Cause that's not how it's supposed to be. Yeah. You know, if you look at, uh, I mean, this is one of my favorites, but Romans 15 in the Passion Translation, it talks about like, if you're the mature one, mm -hmm. right? And you think the other person's the immature one, now I'm paraphrasing, but you're, they're the immature one. You're supposed to come down and actually bring Jesus to them at the level that they're at to mm -hmm. actually raise them up to where, yeah. you know, it's, it's a, it's a here, let's do this together. Not sure. a, it's never this. Yeah. Cause God didn't even do that. He could have stayed in heaven. He came way down here to be like, what's up? Yeah. Let's eat bread. <laughs> Let's, you know, it's, it's like somebody complaining instead of having a better idea. You know? Yes. 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 So what? Okay. So now you're in your twenties. Mm -hmm. Okay. You obviously you had the long hair. Well, I didn't have long hair, but I had mm. like spiky rocker, oh, okay, rocker, rocker hair. hair. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so you're jamming out, you're singing, you're doing all this stuff. Cause people don't even know the song. What was the song that, uh, kind of hit scars? scars, scars was like, uh, the main song, I think it went like number two on yeah. Billboard. Yeah, no, I, I love it. I was jamming it this morning. Yeah. So the cool thing about that song is, you know, um, KSBJ, if you're not familiar with Houston radio, it's the largest Christian radio station in the country. Yeah. And so to get a song on KSBJ is like incredible, you know? It's yeah, like, yeah. It's huge. And I grew up like a rock throw away from that place. The private school that I just told you about was literally down the street from no way. You know, the school I went to, you know, so. That's crazy. So, no. you know, your whole life, <laughs> your whole, my whole life, I was like, oh man, that'd be so crazy to get a song on KSBJ one day. You That's know? dope. And then, Cause you know, until yeah. now people are like, well, why do they even have it on there? But yeah. this is huge yeah. that you had that song on there. So you're in your twenties. I mean, you start going to church. How do you wind up? Getting together with that band and yeah, start writing songs. So, like, how does that so, work? so the short of it is, uh, from private school, I went to public school, back to private school, graduated from private school, and then directly out of that, I was I had always been in like rock bands, yeah, and things like that, or you know, a couple different bands, yeah. But this whole time, I've always, I, from maybe like eleven on, I've been in ministry, like as a as a, as a as a as a as a worship leader. So, so wow. like my, I was like leading worship at churches super young, but even before then I was, you know, Feliz Navidad, you know, uh -huh. at, the, <laughs> at, the, at the, at the, at the churches at like, you know, two or three years old on stage. Oh, you would have been that kid on TikTok yeah, that's yeah, always singing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I've always been in ministry. And yeah. so from like, I would say like. Come experience the love that will change your life every Sunday at Get Rap Church. Visit us at 23221 Alden Westfield Road in Spring, Texas, 77373 for three services at 9 a.m., 1015 a.m., and 12 p.m. Not in Houston, not a problem. Join us for our online service from anywhere in the world by downloading our free Get Rap TV app or by visiting Get Rap Church's YouTube channel. Also, be sure to check us out at Get Rap People on all social media platforms to stay up to date on everything happening at Get Rap Church. I don't even know, man, like 13 to, you know, my early twenties, I was in a, I was in like this rock band and then it went from that band to another band. And this whole time I'm still doing ministry, but I'm singing in bars and restaurants and things like that mm -hmm. and, uh, playing shows. Uh, and with, do you know that you're struggling internally like during this time or you just think this is what it is? Are you still like the, the same way of what you got brought up or did you encounter the grace of God and go like, this is not right. You know, this no, is what it is. No, like, cause where are you at? Yeah. So that whole time I just still had that programming, you know? Mm, okay. So I just always was like, uh, I don't know if I, you know, I, it's like, I believed in God and I had moments of like sure. emotionalism, I guess. Sure. And things like oh, that. Yeah. Churches. That's a whole another, yeah, it's yeah, a whole another conversation. And, but, uh, Cause we think that's revival, but go ahead. Oh, don't, uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, keep going. that is, we'll, we'll yeah. get into that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but you know, I, I, the transition from, I did American Idol four times. You did? I, I've done the voice three what? times. Now keep in mind, I'm not talking about on the show and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> but I, I auditioned for American Idol a bunch of times, the voice, all that kind of stuff. I, I moved to Nashville, did a record in Nashville, but that didn't work out. came back. I mean, I'd done it. I don't know. You, That's like any, any hallelujah, any, <laughs> any of the, there it is. <laughs> you know, it, all, if you're, if you're a singer, artist, whatever you are, baseball player, whatever, I I'm telling you, I've put in the work. Wow. I mean, I've done a lot. I played 
Um, I play American Idol. You were jamming on American Idol. That's kind of dope. Well, trying to. <laughs> um, I mean, I've done a, I, in my twenties. I did a lot. I played a lot of yeah. shows, four yeah. hour shows every other night, and church on Sunday morning. I mean, literally for like six years, I drove from um, Porter to Clear Lake, which is an hour drive. After playing three shows in a row, to set up an entire PA system, lead worship run Come sound on. all this stuff by night <laughs> he's in the yeah, club yeah oh and, and i had by people, day I had, I had people hating on me because of that too you know oh yeah but uh, anyway fast forward i did all that stuff in in my teens and 20s i, I prepared yeah. i did all this work yeah to make yeah you my, developed your, your gift my craft and yeah you know put all the work in and then um i got to the point like my late 20s where i was like i'm done doing this so you're gonna quit? Yeah, I was like, I'm. This is dope. I'm like, I'm, I'm so tired of packing my gear up and playing shows, and you know, keep in mind, as a young person, we kind of skipped around, but as a young person, I had prophets and evangelists and random people at Chick Fil A stop and grab me and be like, Hey, the, God has a word for you, and He told me to tell you that. Uh, you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing. You're just running from it. I mean, I had all this crazy stuff my whole life. Kind uh, of, because you didn't quit and it turned into... Yeah. So, well, is check, it crazy? Check, check, or is it, you know what I'm saying? This, like, check this out. Check uh, this out. So um, prophets and evangelists used to always prophesy, you're going to yeah. lead millions and da 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 and all this stuff. And so um, I was... I, th I want to say I was like 28 or 29. I mean, this is like 2016. Yeah. I'm... I'm miserable i'm depressed i don't want to do music anymore i i hate ministry i don't want to do that anymore and i was just running myself into the ground but i'm watching a, a, Net, a netflix mike tyson netflix documentary i can't remember the name of it but this is mike tyson and he's like fighting lennox lewis or somebody i can't remember who it was mm -hmm. and he gets knocked out yeah the, the baddest fighter on the planet gets knocked out by the dude that's just not even close to his that'll preach right no, go ahead and so they're the 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 uh they're interviewing him and they said, Mike, how did you get knocked out? You're Mike Tyson. You're Mike Tyson. How did you get defeated by this guy? And he said, I just don't have the fight in me anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't have the fight in me anymore, is what he said. And I'm sitting there at like two o'clock in the morning watching that and I said, that's how I feel. I feel like I don't have it in me. I don't have it anymore for this thing, you know? And so I was like, I'm done. I don't wanna do music anymore. And that's how I felt. I felt like I had, I was, I was championed. I was like in my circle, I was like one of the best singers yeah, yeah, and artists yeah. and stuff like that. You know, not saying in the world yeah. or anything close yeah, to yeah. that, but in my team or my, my, uh, city, You're like in my world, yeah, yeah. In, in my, in my, in my, yeah, in my world. Yeah. My circle. I felt like I was good. You know what I mean? I, I was good at what I did. I mean, there's people way better than me, of course, but the point is, is I felt like I had worked just like Tyson my whole life to be where I was at in that moment. And then I felt like I had ran out of steam and I decided to quit. And this was like November or something like that of, of 16. And then randomly I get this email on YouTube. Hey, this is so-and-so from Sony Records in Nashville. And Won't we, he do and it? He's like, <laughs> like a, we, <laughs> he goes, we saw this YouTube video of you singing, and this band is interested in you. I don't really want to say the band name, yeah. but um, you know, this band is interested in you, and we want to fly you out to meet them. That's how I ended up in the band. The band was already kind of a thing, doing their thing, yeah. and um, that's a whole nother. Yeah. So you you get in this band. Yeah. Boom. You start jamming yeah. what happens in that period how did it how did it go how long before it... so we'll so we'll skip uh i'm trying to filter because i just i don't there's certain things i just don't even it's not even worth talking about but sure but yeah but i want points about you yeah you know so um we did the the van and trailer thing for a good almost year and a half now this yep. band was already pre-signed and they already had their own stuff going on but they they hadn't really like taken off radio wise like they didn't really have the success that um you know they had wanted and, and yeah. they, they were a band long before I came along yeah and uh we van and trailered it you know and and I was just dude I was so just humbled and like grateful you know what I mean yeah, like they, after the shows I'm like guys thank y'all for having me and blah 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 and um we we started writing you know the process is a little bit different than than you know just being in a hometown band. I mean, you go in songwriting round uh, uh, groups and uh, 
uh, or not groups, but you go into like a studio or somebody's house and you sit down with like really good writers and you write songs with them and things like that. And so, um, after about a year and a half of being in the band, I, um, uh, started writing a record when, uh, Harvey hit Houston. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, my mm-hmm. grandmother is like dying of cancer and just all this chaos has happened in Houston. And the song scars came, uh, kind of came out uh, from some of that and of course there was other writers on the song um but we we wrote a record and there yep. was there was a lot of turmoil and right. stress mm-hmm. in the band and you know it's humans yeah um and just a lot of just stuff that just wasn't cool you know um and then we got an opportunity to go on tour with like casting crowns and you know, you're getting to hang out with all these people you looked up to as a kid, and you're like, "Oh man, this is amazing!" Like, yeah. here I was. That's surreal. Here I was playing at Joe Bob's Crawfish Bar in <laughs> in Houston. Whatever, I, mean, I just made that yeah, up. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, singing to people's cell phones. You know, basically because they're just staring at their phone the whole time or staring mm-hmm. at the TVs. And then next thing I know, I'm like touring with these huge, mm-hmm. you know, that's got to be cool. You know, guys, and and uh, you know, it was incredible. Um, and then. Fast forward to uh, the release of the, our record, yeah. the song Scars on it. And that's when things kind of it, it, changed, man, yeah. a little bit. Um, and we, we saw some really cool uh, stuff happen even before uh, that song hit the radio. I mean, we were, you know, arena shows. We're playing all over the United States on tour buses and flights and all that kind of stuff. And so... You know, I got, I got to live it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and uh, in the Christian world, I guess, like you were talking about earlier, people, you know, uh, even, even in any sense, you want to find success. Yeah. yeah, totally. After a while, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, For yeah. me, it was, I mean, 20 years. 20 years. So then now, all of this is going on, songs on the radio, da-da-da, and what happens to you? Um, so after we... Yeah, after we the song got out and all that kind of stuff, uh, I am I start feeling real sick, like out of nowhere. I start having like brain fog and fatigue, and you know, I'm I, at this point I'm like flying back and forth from Nashville to Houston all the yeah. time because I'm still living here, and I start feeling like it's just real weird, like all the time. And I, I, I it was like November 2018, late November. I'm laying in bed. I'm about to fall asleep and it felt like somebody took a stun gun dude and just whop, right there on my heart and mm-hmm. it just shocked me like yeah. it shot electricity through my whole body and uh i jumped up and I, my heart's pounding out of my chest and i called 911 i'm like hey i think i'm having a heart attack come get me yada 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 wow and so uh that was special effects that was, yeah, right. hey, listen, right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's um, what, yeah that's what we do <laughs> and uh it ended ended up in the hospital your your blood pressure stroke level you you know you need to get some medicine blah, 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 but you, everything's fine and um that's when it all started man all the chaos with the health stuff and it just got worse and worse and worse panic attacks anxiety any type of heart attack stroke symptom uh chest pain jaw pain all of it man i'm talking about total chaos and this 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 was like I'm still in the band. I'm so we're still playing shows and stuff, um, and I guess I I guess from there I I had to take some time off to really yeah. assess what was going on because this was like, you know, like I couldn't walk. Yeah. Um, but yeah, from there, man, I. I you go to the doctors, got, all that. One of the doctors, I mean, they checked me out. They were just like, here, take this medicine. You know, they yeah. weren't trying to figure nothing out. They just said, take this medicine. So I got on like some, you know, uh, blood pressure stuff and it made me worse. Um, and then I decided like, well, maybe I'm feeling a little bit better. I'll get on the road. So I flew to Amsterdam and we, the band and I played three shows in Europe. We did uh, Switzerland, I think, Amsterdam and England. Mm-hmm. Nice. And Switzerland was like, uh, I mean, Amsterdam was the biggest show of my life. It was like 20 something, 30,000 people in this arena. That's cool. Mm-hmm. And um, it's online. Um, <laughs> He's and, like, you can go check it out. No, I, be, I, I'm, well, go check I'm, it I'm out. saying check it out because uh, I'm on stage and I don't even remember being there. Like, it makes me emotional talking about it because I'm, this is 
the biggest show of my life and I'm like about to pass out mm. like at the, on the stage. And I honestly had no idea what was wrong with me. I mean, I couldn't wow. walk to the airport. I couldn't make it to the stage. I mean, I was so sick. And uh, um, I came home, I got on the flight to come home and I was by myself because the band ended up going somewhere else. And I'm on the flight back home and I'm like, I'm texting my managers and I'm like, hey, um, something's really wrong mm -hmm. with me, you know? And this is all like within a few months of uh, of starting to feel sick. Yeah. And I ended up uh, coming home and had to leave the band, quit the band and try to figure out what was wrong with me. And um, I don't know how much more you want to hear about that part. Yeah, but... what, what was wrong with you? Yeah, so the short what of it say? is, yeah, the short of it is uh, about three years ago, after being sick since 2018, mm -hmm. um, I was diagnosed with late stage uh, with chronic Lyme disease is what they call it. Mm -hmm. um, Lyme disease comes from a tick bite. Um, it can come from insects of all shapes and sizes that um, and that's that why I like you. the city. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you can get in the city. city yeah. You can get no. in the city too, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought it was more like in the woods and no, you, you can get it in the city too. Um, there's, there's studies that live in the bubble. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's studies that even, uh, mosquitoes carry it mm -hmm. in certain really? areas. Yeah, man. Mosquitoes and, uh, spiders. And so how old are you when you find this out? This was three years ago. So three I was years 35. Ago. Yeah. 35. And then, everything just stops well i mean everything stopped in 2019 when i left the band yeah you know and so that's a hard pill to that's swallow a tough time too because 2019 was yeah. horrible for everyone well, well right right before covid yeah stuff. yeah and so um, you're going through covid no check this check this out bro this is what you know uh i left the band i had to sell my house move in with family because i'm like i'm dying i mean i i this took over my brain it was it it, it spread to my brain and so I'm having panic attacks in my sleep every night, um, hallucinating, seeing colors and sparks. And I mean, I still do. I still have. I'm not hallucinating. I'm not weird. <laughs> Wait, we're like, mm -hmm. he's like, no. I don't even know where I am right now. No, I, he goes, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I have. Uh, so Lyme disease, once it's in your brain, can start causing a lot of neurological issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, man, it's deadly in some cases. And um, there's a lot of other diseases that come with okay. Lyme. Mm -hmm. So when you're infected, let, let's say you get bit by a tick, you have a really high chance that tick's gonna infect you with, with viruses and bacteria and all mm -hmm. types of stuff. And so I, I for sure have um, what they call chronic Lyme disease or Borrelia burgdorferi is the actual terminology for it, the name for it. And I have what's called cat scratch fever, Bartonella. You can get it from cats and fleas. And really? And Bartonella is, is really serious. Because once it's in your body, um, it's really hard to treat, and it, it can wreak havoc on your entire body. So yeah. li Lyme is the same way, but mm -hmm. the point is, is they 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 have a little party. They have so a little they party. come they come together with uh, you know they kind of <laughs> it's like brother and sister. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, you have to sell your house. I had to sell my house and all that kind of stuff. Move in with family, and my health just took a w way worse turn so for like two years i had to stay with family and you know try to figure so your out. whole world get turned upside oh, down. oh yeah man yeah, yeah. i lost and so how are you feeling about god at that moment right like because because mm. you're doing the god songs yeah right you're praying right you got all this stuff going on you highlight of your life right you're yeah. like man i god we're doing this together we're gonna change well the world. i felt like god was finally like rewarding me you know what really? I mean? For all the years. and I mean, because I, I remember year for years. Oh, I yeah, was yeah. like, okay. God, wh when is it my turn? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, boom, you get there. Yeah, I finally get there, and then, boom, what happens? Yeah, get, so I then what sick. happens to you? What happens to your relationship with God? What happens at that moment? What What's going through your mind? Well, I'll tell you, I... Did you ever get depressed? I could. Or, well, I mean, I've, I I dealt with depression my whole life. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that's linked to the childhood stuff, you know? Yeah. Um. The The... The, the church yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, and, all that and yeah. other things but um you know of course i mean think about it bro you're you're on a stage you're on stages and tour buses and getting to do this thing that you wanted to do your whole life and then out of nowhere some little bug mm. changes all that like yeah. like i wish i was like 
you know, thug, you know, something happened to me. Like yeah. I got, you know what I mean? Like something, <laughs> something Some more gangster. Story, you're like, <laughs> I got, you know, I got, bit. I got you know, like <laughs> yeah, I no. got bit by a shark <laughs> or like I got in a fight with <laughs> yo, a gorilla or something. Oh, yo, this dude is crazy. Yeah. Like you know, the kid man, me, I got shot four yeah, times. Something, then you got the 50 story. Something bro. I'm over here talking about a tick, a little mm-hmm. bug, you know what I mean? Like it's just wild, but you know, I mean, it's serious though, man. I mean, there's, there's people, there's, there's Facebook groups, man. People lose everything, dude. Yeah, we we have a personal yeah, friend. Yeah, we know we have a personal yeah. friend. Mm-hmm. People people lose every a personal friend that kind of yeah. same, same boat. Yep. There's a singing, there's a high uh, suicide rate with people that have Did you ever want to take your life? Well, let's answer the first thing, the God okay. thing. Um you know, look. What do they say about faith? It's the abundance of things hoped for, not yeah. the not the there abundance of things, things not mm-hmm. seen, right? Mm-hmm. Um when you're being eaten alive from the inside mm-hmm. by something like this and nothing changes, no amount of prayer, no amount of, you know, music, Christian music. Mm-hmm. That faith is tested then you, at that moment. You know, well, there's, let me tell you something. There's a lot of these Christians that need to be tested a little more because being told when you're dying, well, you just need to pray. Well, you just need to pray harder. Those people haven't been tested enough, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. They haven't experienced uh, significant trauma or loss or uh, hell on earth. And that's what I experienced is true, true torture. Um, that no pills and no prayer and no anything seemed to touch. And so uh, there were nights, um, you know, I know a lot of people in the Christian music industry and ministry and stuff like that in, ge- in general. Um, so one of my good friends, Kieran Sims, um, He's got some ki- Kieran, killer. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, we know, you know him. Kieran. I was just with him two nights ago. He's one of my <laughs> good friends. He's awesome. But I was I was laying in bed. You know, he has ulcerative colitis. I don't know if y'all know. He's yeah. he's sick as well. And um, I would lay in bed at night and listen to his songs and clench a pillow mm-hmm. and just pray like God, like where are you at, dude? You know, like, I'm freaking dying. Like I'm I'm I don't know what. He, and that keep in mind at this point, I had no idea what was wrong with me. Mm. So think about that. Like, I don't know where I just lost my mind. That's how I felt. Like, I lost yeah. my mind. Um, but my relationship with God, I mean, like, it's always been rocky. Because think about the childhood. Like, okay, well, I'm being told if I believe in this dude, you're going to, you know, you're going to die. So I'm like, okay, well, I mean, well, what do I do then? Like, mm. So when you get sick and you're dealing with something as significant as, as Lyme disease or any, any ser- significant health issue I mean it'll test you and so for me what I what think about it 19 I had to quit my career I had uh, uh, my grandmother passed away from cancer shortly before that Um, I, I, I get to watch my song that I'm no longer involved in climb the charts um, COVID happens 2020 when yeah. I'm sick so the government shutting down the entire world. What do you think that does to my childhood trauma of the government's coming? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh no, that, that brought it right back up. Right. You know? You're like, Oh, they're coming any yeah. day now. So, you know, then I, I had a long relationship that, um, dissolved because the real people show up when you need them the most. And the ones that, aren't the real ones they kind of fall off to the wayside as soon as you're going through some real deal stuff yeah so real ones are always great yeah my therapist uh we talked about life as a table and this table probably has four legs on it he said most people they they deal with like one leg falling off you know or breaking Mm -hmm. which is like their health or whatever he said dude you lost your faith your career your health you know, all these things. He said, of course, your life's going to fall over. So, you know, you're going to experience some, some loss, you know, and, and, um, yeah, that's what happened. That's deep. So, so the relationship thing with God, it's like what I had to do was I, I, and I, and this is where I'm at now to answer the question oh, that's cool. is I had to take this idea of God and I'm just going to put that on the shelf over here hmm. because it's not doing anything for me, but confusing me and making me feel um worse yeah you know you know what's cool about this table mm. 
that it's only got one leg. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And oh, it's, yeah. It's the only one thing that's holding it up. Shit about a Hanna about about a Kia. The truth, though. Yeah. Uh, I think that's that's what makes God cool. Like I I apologize that you know God was misrepresented because mm-hmm. I think you'd have a really I I mean just I like I I think you're super dope. So <laughs> so I know that God having a relationship with you is like everything, right? And yeah. like. He was misrepresented, so you think, oh, my relationship with God is rocky. No, it's rocky because it was misrepresented, and so your view of who God is might be a little, like, distorted upon upon all these people that you trusted to tell Mm -hmm. you the truth. But when you, you know, get a table that only has one leg, Mm -hmm. that guy's amazing. That's cool. That's cool that you tied that in. I see. That guy's guy's just really amazing. And um, remember I said earlier, I said if if I didn't have a table with one leg, I probably wouldn't even be a Christian right now mm. because of most of the people that misrepresented him wanted me to read a certain way or be this way or be that way. Um, most of the people that I've met, even pastoring, uh, and Stephanie's been with me the whole time, mm. um, some of them would have made me go back to drugs and selling drugs, right? Mm. So being the fact that I've always kept this one-legged table yeah, um, and it was always like me and Jesus really helped has helped me kind of even walk this out because there's a lot of people that well if you're not like this and you're not like that and you're too funny or you're too crazy or you're too Mm -hmm. you know and i'm like man god loves me like that though he Mm -hmm. made me like that Mm -hmm. like he he wants me to be wild and he wants me to be that way um so so you know i'm sorry that he was misrepresented in your you know in your life and that i don't think i think he's been there the whole time Mm -hmm. Uh, because he's that one leg you know he's been there the whole time just kind of really wanting to kick it with you Mm -hmm. just the way you kick it playing your guitar like whatever that is like he's like yo uh, so i'm gonna apologize i appreciate you You saying that that, because i I think i think that just happens so much let's talk about that for a second yeah um so i've been i've been in ministry i mean let's just say since i was a kid yeah um outside of like maybe one church that I can think of I never felt uh like I belonged like mm-hmm. I never felt um like I had the support that I would need you know what I mean for, yeah. from that community and to give you an example uh 2018 was my departure from that band uh, 19, sorry. Yeah. Was the departure from that band. And uh, ask me how many people reached out to me to check on me mm. in six years. Six years. I haven't had anybody from that whole team. Um, we're talking about labels, mm-hmm. management, band, churches I've been a part of pastors that I've helped build churches for I mean was that God or people well let's say it like this you and me are brothers yes I don't need to go to you to have a relationship with our dad true and you know I don't I don't like I said I shelved that idea and it's still shelved right now because I just don't think I think that's the best place I need to be at right now but from a lot logistical perspective um i don't i don't need to go to you or let's say you're my sister Mm -hmm. i don't need to have a relationship with my sister and have the confusion of her mind or your mind or whoever to and like you're talking about people's opinions yeah to get in the way of my relationship with our father Mm -hmm. um and so i got a number for you mm -hmm. how many people reach out how many people? I got one. One. Yeah, who? Me. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I came to you, though. <laughs> <laughs> you, did, you did. Came to you, man. Yeah. But, but I, I, I can't yeah. even take, that's that one-legged table again. Because, I, I mean, I told you, like, this is all like, okay, Lord, you know, because I had first put your number in the notes. Because mm-hmm. I was like, man, God, you know. He was trying to decide if I was legit. I was not. just, I just didn't want. I didn't it's like, know. I don't like, know. Maybe. I, you know, you have a busy life. You have a lot of things. I got six kids, right? All that, and so I'm like, but I felt like the Lord was like, mm-hmm. no, you need to. So I, I think it's just really Him kind of going, hey, you know, put me in your pocket, like, don't mm-hmm. get me off the shelf. 
uh, just you and him. I, I have moments. Just you and him. Yeah, I mean, I have moments like that from time to time, even to this day, where it's kind of like little taps on the shoulder, you know, type of thing. And I mean, oh, yeah. I still, oh, yeah. I don't I really, I don't even really think he's on the shelf. Yeah, I think you think you think you put him on the shelf, but he's like you alive. Well, hey, you just said you look sexier with the no hair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, he got you looking good. Nah. He got you. You know what I'm saying? No, I mean, there's there's a lot more to the illness that I'm not really talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. really that's really affected me um, significantly. And, and that's, that's a wrap. wrap. Thank you. This is Real Family for joining us. You can be a part of the crew by following us on social media or writing us at PO Box 671-626, Houston, Texas 77267. And don't forget, stay real.